Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning on Zoom for the first Sunday after Christmas. We uh, hope that you're going to enjoy your being with us this morning. Uh, we welcome to those on Facebook and YouTube who are watching us today or later. We hope that you will find a blessing in what you, what you hear from us this morning and being with us. I would like to suggest a craft. Perhaps you'd like to write a new baby card to Mary and Joseph, uh, maybe with some advice, uh, maybe with some special congratulations for this particular baby that they, are aware, that they are welcoming into the world. And now can we have our opening prayer? On screen. O oh God, our loving Father, help us rightly to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Deliver us from evil by the blessing that Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. Amen. Now, for those of you who don't uh, know me, I'm Judy Morris and I'm a reader. And this is the first time I've actually done the leading on Zoom, so it's a little bit different for me. So I hope you'll forgive any little mistakes as we go along. We're now going to sing our first hymn, which is Our Little Town of Bethlehem.
to Kingdom Arts for allowing us to play their lovely carol this morning. Now let's just come before God in quiet to think of the ways in which we've fallen short, what he asks us to be and to do. Heavenly Father, <laughs> We thank you for the gift of Jesus, the Christ child, this Christmas. Through him, you have accepted us as your children. Forgive us when we have not put Jesus at the centre of our celebrations. Forgive us for the times we have left others out in the cold, when we have had no room in our hearts for those in need. Forgive us for when we have lacked generosity of spirit and trusting in your loving forgiveness, we ask your grace to help us to begin again, to walk always in the light that is Jesus. Amen. And now our collect for today. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Can you just leave that there for a moment, please, Ian? I think it's just often our colleagues are quite difficult prayers. Maybe we don't always understand them. But I think this morning's is such a beautiful one. God who has wonderfully created in his own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through Jesus Christ. Christ came to restore us to what God has wanted us to be, what God made us to be, so that we can share his divinity just as he shared our humanity. How much better could we be if we remembered that each day? Thank you, Ian. And now our first reading from Galatians. Galatians 4, 4 to 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our gospel reading. It's a reading from Luke 2 verses 8 to 21. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to sing Mary's boy child. any family traditions in your home? One of ours is that everybody who comes helps us complete a large jigsaw. Although this year it'll only be John and I because there's only the two of us here. I particularly like the murder mystery jigsaws. I don't know if you've got them but this is one that I like. It's the murder at St Andrews. You complete the jigsaw and then at the end of it you see the clues and solve the mystery. Even though the clues are in front of your eyes, it's easy to miss their significance. It's the same with today's reading from Luke chapter two. I want to look at three clues and their significance, as it's so easy to miss them that as we think, we know the Christmas story so well. Firstly, the shepherds. They were some of the lowest of the low in Jewish society. They were despised by the orthodox Jewish leaders as they couldn't observe all the meticulous hand-washing rules and regulations. But obviously they were out in the fields most of the time and the flocks demanded attention all the time. Yet, isn't it ironic 
that it was to the simple men, the lowest of the low, those working in the fields, that God's message first came. Interestingly, theologians believe they were special shepherds. Every morning and evening, an unblemished lamb was sacrificed in the temple in Jerusalem to God. To ensure the supply of perfect offerings was always available, the temple authorities had their own private flocks, and we know that these were pastured near Bethlehem. It's possible that these shepherds were in charge of the flocks from which those temple offerings were chosen. What a poignant thought that the shepherds who looked after the temple lambs were the first visitors to see the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Secondly, three times in today's reading from Luke, it mentions that Jesus was born in a manger or feeding trough. When Mary and Joseph were told there was no room at the inn, tradition, Christmas and carols, cards and Christmas carols show they were off the stable with the manger and the animals. But the word used for inn has several meanings. It's probable that the Holy Family were on the ground floor of the house where people normally stayed upstairs and the ground floor would be often used for animals, hence the manger or the feeding trough. But no, Luke doesn't mention any animals in chapter two, such as ox and asses, or even whether the shepherds brought any sheep with them. Why was the feeding trough or manger so important? Because how were the shepherds to know which of all the babies in Bethlehem were the one they should visit? The angel told them, this will be the sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped up and lying in a manger. The manger or the feeding trough isn't important in himself. It's a clue or a signpost to the identity and the task of the baby lying in it. Thirdly, suddenly with the angel, there was a crowd of the heavenly armies praising God, singing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those among his favour. 2000 years ago, when a boy was born, the local musicians congregated at his house to greet him with simple music. But remember, Jesus's family had traveled 70 miles from their home in Nazareth for the, as far as the Sea of Galilee, to Bethlehem, just south of Jerusalem, for the census. With Jesus being born in Bethlehem, that ceremony couldn't take place. Isn't it lovely to think that the heavenly minstrels took the place of the earthly minstrels and the angels sang the songs for Jesus that the earthly singers could not sing? Luke chapter two begins with the reason the baby Jesus was in Bethlehem. The family had to go to Joseph's town to be registered after the decree by the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus that the whole Roman world had to be registered. Augustus never heard of Jesus of Nazareth, but within a century or so, his successors in Rome had not only heard of Jesus, but were taking steps to obliterate his followers. Within just over three centuries, the emperor himself had become a Christian and Christianity has continued since then as Christians have taken the Christian message all over the world. When I was editor of a number of newspapers in a large company, I naturally concentrated on my own papers and my managing director said to me many times, Look at the bigger picture. Some decisions have to be taken for the sake of the whole newspaper group and not just my newspapers. So must we as Christians look at the bigger picture of the Christmas story. We shouldn't just concentrate on the clues of the shepherds, the manger and the crowd of the heavenly host, admire them and forget them. We must understand that these Clues are pointing us to the bigger picture that the baby lying there in the manger 
is the true king of the world. We should join the shepherds who returned home, glorifying God and praising him for all they had seen and heard as it had been told to them. May that be true for us in the days and weeks ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. A lot to think about that, isn't there? That every year the Christmas story brings something new into our hearts and our, our lives. And we're going to sing again. We're going to sing that lovely hymn, Infant Holy. Infant holy, infant holy, for his birth and death of soul, of sin knowing, little knowing, Christ the baby is Lord of all, with sweet and sweet and sweet and sweet. brought to us by Claims Choir. There's a lot of talent between our churches, as we can see. And uh, now we ask Barbara to lead us in our intercessions. Mary treasured all that she had heard and pondered this in her heart. May we treasure all we know about Jesus and hold him in our hearts. As we celebrate Jesus being born among us, let us pray to God the Father that the church may truly be the body of Christ and that all Christians will strive to make Christ known in the world. We pray for the clergy and congregation of Clane's Church and St George's Church. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. We pray that the world God loved into being and placed in our care may be valued and respected, that we stop the harm that we are doing to our planet Earth, prevent further destruction of rainforests, of wild animals and their habitats, and that we share Earth's resources fairly. O oh, come, let us adore him. That every family may be blessed and guided through the troubles, disappointments and challenges of life. That families who have been separated this year may know the true value of kinship. Let us support one another in love and forgive each other every day. O oh, come, let us adore him. That there may be food and shelter enough for each person on earth. We pray for refugees, for the hungry and the homeless, for those who have need of food banks, May we give practical help and comfort to all in need. O oh, come, 
let us adore him. And we pray that all who are suffering, the sick, those in pain or in mental distress, will find support and peace of mind. That the dying may be at peace with God and come to know the joy of heaven. O oh, come, let us adore him. That our praises and thankfulness spring up wherever we walk through the daily gift of life that you have blessed us with. So we offer our prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you for those lovely prayers, Barbara. And we're now going to sing that lovely carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. by St George's Choir, <coughs> um, part of our carol service this year. If you haven't seen the online carol service, sorry. 
please do go on YouTube or Facebook and watch this and also the crib service so there were quite a few things there if you've got some spare time to fill in we've um we've been pretty busy on zoom this year and thanks to all those who've worked really hard to ensure that this Christmas we've been able to share um, the Christmas message in as many ways as possible if you've not been to see the cribs yet and um, the outdoor Mary and Joseph it's probably your last chance before uh, the wind takes them all together. So at Claims, at St. Stephen's and at St. George's, uh, please take a, a chance to, to go outside, maybe with meet somebody there for an outside uh, meeting. Um, has anyone uh, done a bit, bas birthday card for baby Jesus just before our blessing? As I, I think Emily was doing something, no? She, yes. Oh, that's lovely. Very nice picture. Thank you, Emily. I, I've done one. Yes. Go on, Joe. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. Yeah. It says, congratulations, Mary and Joseph. Welcome to your new baby. Very nice. I thought... Mary and Joseph, welcome to the lovely baby Jesus. I hope you're now, now going to get a few days rest after your visitors have gone. And may the star that has shone over the stable guide you in the years ahead. So maybe something for you to think of with the next few days. What would you write on a, a card to Mary and Josie? And now for our blessing. May the love of the word made flesh enfold us. May his joy fill our lives and his peace be in our hearts. May God's blessing rest on us as this year comes to an end and his star guide us into the year ahead. Amen. Go in love, joy and peace to serve the Lord, in the name of Christ, amen. And we now say goodbye to our friends on Facebook. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hope you enjoy this lovely day. <laughs>